The Angels Sanguine are a second founding chapter of the Adeptus Astartes, created from Blood Angels genetic stock. According to the chapter itself, the Angel Sanguine were the most faithful and resplendent of all the sons of Sanguinius, formed by those Astartes most devoted to their Primarch's vision. The Angel Sanguine have a long and glorious history, and have been instrumental in the Imperium's efforts in defeating the forces that emerge from the Eye of Terror, obtaining many victories against the Demon and the Traitor alike. And yet, the chapter itself is highly secretive compared to the other sons of Sanguinius. The warriors of the chapter keep their faces covered and rarely remove their helmets in front of other Imperial forces. So protective of their secrecy are they, that the Angel Sanguine would be willing to commit acts of violence against those who dare remove their hoods and helmets without consent. Even a Psyker using their abilities to try and see under the Astartes' armour will be met with great hostility. As detailed within the novel Red Fury, when the Sanguinary Priest Corbulo and the Blood Angel's Chief Librarian Mephiston attempted to examine the body of Brother Ride of the Angel Sanguine, the Chapter Master of the Angel Sanguine, Sentakan, became enraged, promising both the Sanguinary Priest and Librarian with both mutilation and death. If I suspect you are using your witch sight to peer into the flesh of my kinsmen, your eyes will be cut from your head, Librarian. No one touches the flesh of our fallen unless he wishes to join them. So wrathful was Sentakan that even Dante, the honoured and respected chapter master of the Blood Angels, was forced to back down and submitted to Sentakan's demands. So why do these mysterious Astartes rarely, if ever, show their faces to anyone but their own kin? One possibility is simply due to a unique cultural tradition of the chapter, one that is potentially similar to that of a monastic order, with the brothers of the chapter keeping their true identities hidden from all but those who are part of the order. This would seem innocent enough, as many chapters have unique cultures different from other chapters, even those descended from the same genetic stock. For example, the Iron Snakes are a successor chapter to the Ultramarines, and yet, uniquely, they anoint the ground of each world they set foot upon with a vial of salt water from the seas of their homeworld of Ithaca. The act of covering one's face from others is not unique to the Angel Sanguine, as many members of the Dark Angels chapter, their successors, and even the mysterious Fallen Angels also obscure their faces with shadowy hoods. But there is another possibility as well. Mutation. As Gene Seed from the Primogenitor Legions is utilised in the creation of numerous successor chapters, mutations have been known to occur, and those that already existed would become worse over time. Some such mutations are considered to be minor and relatively harmless, such as the albinism in the Death Spectres chapter thanks to a defective melanchromic organ, or the inability to experience REM sleep found within the Blood Ravens. Some mutations are more extreme, such as the bony plates and blades found within the Black Dragons, or the Curse of the Wolfen found within the Space Wolves. Much like their fellow successor chapters from the same genetic stock, the Angel Sanguine shared a deeply flawed genetic heritage of their forefathers, the Blood Angels. The aspirants of the Angel Sanguine have been noted to develop a substantial increase in psychic potential, suggesting that their gene seed has indeed mutated since the chapter's inception, lending credence to the mutation theory. In addition, the gene seed of the Angel Sanguine has inherited the flaws of the Blood Angels. The first is the Red Thirst, 
which gives the brothers of the chapter a craving for blood. The second flaw they suffer from is known as the Black Rage, where members of the chapter believe that they are sanguineous during the final stages of the Horus Heresy, and are driven into a violent rage because of it. Those afflicted by the Black Rage are comprised into specialised assault units, known as the Death Company, where, led by one of the chapter's chaplains, the only individuals who can hold any semblance of control over them, they will tear the Imperium's enemies apart before dying honourably in battle. The story Blood of Angels also shows that the Black Rage affects the Angel Sanguine to such an extreme degree that the chapter's death company will even brutally tear their chaplains apart limb from limb. So could these already pre-existing flaws have grown more exacerbated over the course of several millennia? Another thing to note about the gene seed flaws of the Blood Angels is that, seemingly, the most extreme cases of the Red First and Black Rage will alter sufferers on a physical level. In the Blood Quest graphic novels, Brother Cloten, a battle brother whose affliction of the Red First is so great that he wishes to die in battle rather than succumb to it, was shown to eventually start growing vestigial horns upon his skull. In Blood Quest Book 2, when Cloten was shown a vision of his future self, this version of Cloten that was shown to have fully succumbed to the Red First had large horns and bony growths along his limbs, as well as his eyes becoming pale and colourless, lacking visible sclera. The Red Thirst and Black Rage causing physical mutation within Gene Seed derived from Sanguinius has also been confirmed within the novel Devastation of Baal, with the following passage, depicting when those Blood Angels who had succumbed to the flaws within their Gene Seed were finally unleashed from their prison within the Tower of Amerio to sate their primal urges. They were abominations, twisted far from their human origins by rampantly malfunctioning gene seed. They were twice the size of mortal men, bulging with muscles. Yellowed fangs took the place of human teeth. Their skin was blood red and waxy, their eyes amber. They bounded along on knuckled fists like apes, screaming at the sky. Five dozen immortal monsters, whose suffering hung over the chapter like a poison, free at last to kill. If the Angel Sanguine are suffering from the mutation of sprouting horn-like growths, or pale and amber-coloured eyes, this would explain as to why they would keep their heads covered and faces hidden from all others especially members of the Inquisition. However, the Angel Sanguine do seem to be lacking in visible physical mutations on their face, in one documented instance at the very least. Within Devastation of Baal, Brother Balthus is described as having unusually ruddy skin and coarse angelic features. But this being said, this doesn't necessarily disprove the possibility of mutation within the chapter as a whole, as Balthus could simply have been an exception to the rule. But another possibility in regards to the reason the Angel Sanguine keep their heads covered could be due to the chapter sharing such close features with their Primarch Sanguinius. Many Astartes as they age begin to develop features reminiscent of their Primarchs. The Emperor's Children Legion, during the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy, were noted to eventually develop the pale hair and sharp aquiline features of their Primarch Fulgrim, while the Raven Guard would take on the dark hair and pale skin of their Primarch Corvus Corax. As such, given that Balthus was described as having coarse angelic features, Perhaps the Angel Sanguine hide their faces because they develop an appearance that is so strikingly similar to Sanguinius that they have to hide the fact from others, possibly either due to the shame of sharing an appearance with a fallen Primarch, or even due to viewing other Imperials as simply unworthy to look upon the beauty of Sanguinius, 
either hypothesis is still plausible. But as the possibility of chaos raises its head, this leads to a second question about the chapter. What is the secret buried within their fortress monastery? The 5th edition Blood Angels Codex details that the chapter has something hidden deep within the chapter's catacombs. Now it could be possible that the catacombs contain the bodies of the heroes of their chapter, and even their first founding chapter master, with the Angel Sanguine refusing to allow any, but perhaps the current chapter master, to enter out of respect. But what if deep within the catacombs themselves, the inner circle of the chapter, the highest ranking members within the Angel Sanguine, conduct bloody ceremonies of mass slaughter, bloodletting and blood drinking. Could it be that by slaughtering prisoners or even willing individuals, possibly to pay homage to their Primarch Sanguinius or the Emperor, that they could be receiving the attentions and the blessings of Khorne, the Blood God? Perhaps these secret rituals, if they do indeed take place, have accelerated the mutations within the chapter, as the chapter unknowingly finds itself blessed by the Chaos God. A Chaos God taking interest in a Blood Angel successor chapter, in attempt to bring them under their sway, is nothing new. The Blood Drinkers chapter are continuously tempted by the demon, Kairos Fateweaver, that he and he alone can offer the chapter a cure to the Black Rage. If even just one member of the Blood Drinkers chapter even considers accepting Fate Weaver's offer, then the entire chapter will be damned, becoming pawns of the Chaos God Zinch. So far, however, all who suffered such temptations have resisted. The idea of Chaos Worship within the Angel Sanguine is not entirely unprecedented, as one of the chapter's recruiting worlds, Barless Trine, was home to a widespread cult dedicated to the worship of Khorne. While officially this cult was indeed wiped out, there is always the possibility that some members of the cult could have indeed survived to propagate their beliefs amongst the rest of the world's population. This in turn means that some of these cultists could have indeed managed to infiltrate the chapter, and as such, this could lead to a future civil war within the chapter between those loyal to the Emperor and those who follow Khorne. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.